Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Praise God. Welcome to Fully Alive. My name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God in Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and Union. Well, praise God if you're in that area. Uh, come out and visit us. Amen. All right. Amen. On Sunday morning services are 11 a.m. Uh, you can also join by Zoom or um, live streaming on Facebook. Well, praise our God. Listen, uh, I want to talk to you today um, again from a sermon that I've shared. Uh, anyway, I, I want to talk to you uh, from the subject of shining as lights in a dark world because we're living in a dark world and uh, our values are being challenged every day. And uh, I've been warning the church and encouraging the church to be prepared uh, for the coming persecution unless God brings revival. And so we are uh, certainly praying for Revival. Now, uh, of course, uh, the world or, or the nation, uh, uh, people that are lost cannot be revived. It is the church that needs revival. So we're praying for the church. And if the church is revived, and we believe that they can be an influence uh, to the world. And uh, uh, we'll trust in that as they shine at lights, as lights in this dark world, uh, that... Uh, uh, God can bring about change. So we're praying uh, for God to bring revival. Amen? And so, but we're, we're praying for awakening among the people of God. God needs to awaken us. We need to, uh, we're praying that God take the scales off our mind, that we can see the deception that's going on, that God will uh, help the people of God see clearly. Okay? Well, so they can be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Okay, well, praise our God. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 12 uh, through 18. Philippians chapter 2. That's, uh, uh, Father, lift me out of myself. I am praying for a special anointing today. We know that it's different as you share with your congregation and as you sit here and share with your uh, Facebook listening audience and viewing audience. So I'm praying for a special anointing to make this word clear. Uh, God, that you will minister to the hearts and minds of the people, that they'll be encouraged, uh, that they'll be challenged, amen, and they'll be moved uh, to a greater commitment. In Jesus' strong name we pray, amen. Philippians uh, chapter 2. The Apostle Paul is speaking. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do of your good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, either labor in vain, Yet if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. Well, praise God, I'm fighting these uh, allergies, uh, <coughs> sinuses, and but I claim my healing in Jesus' name. Praise our God. Listen, I want to talk to you about shining as lights 
in a dark world. Pray for me. Amen. Let me start just by saying that it is all about Jesus. And I'm going to repeat, it's all about Jesus. I said it's all about Jesus. I've shared with you many times that God had a plan before he ever made the world. And that plan was in Christ. Amen. According to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3, 4, 5, and 6, uh, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ and to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. And according to those scriptures, that God had this plan before he ever made the world. And according to uh, this, these scriptures, God wanted children. Amen? Verse 5. Amen. And God wanted holy children. Amen? Uh, verse 3. He wanted to bless us, these children, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Amen. And uh, praise God. Uh, verse 6 says that our lives will be to the praise of his glory. Okay. Amen. Yes. And so verse 4 says it was according, according to a plan that God had. Amen. Before the foundation of the world. And that plan was for sons, holy sons, blessed sons, productive sons. Because uh Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 uh, says, There were works that he foreordained that we should walk in. So uh, it's all about Jesus, okay? The plan was about Jesus. It was about Jesus before the foundation of the world. When God laid the foundation of the world, it was in view to fulfill his plan in Christ. Amen. Uh, when God called Abraham and entered into the covenant agreement with him, it was with a view toward fulfilling his plan in Christ. And when that babe was born over 2,000 years ago in a stable, amen, it was fulfilling the plan that God had in Christ before the foundation of the world. It is all about Jesus. Well, praise God. And the Bible tells us, John tells us in 1 John chapter 4, I mean, chapter 1, rather, verses 4, 5, 6, seven and eight, well, even to nine. Listen to what he says. He says, uh, in him, that was Jesus Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it, couldn't put it out. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And so, so uh, the Bible uh, teaches that, amen, uh, that when Jesus entered into the world, amen, he's referred to as light, amen, Uh that light shone in this dark world, and this dark world couldn't put out that light, okay? John bore witness. He wasn't the light, but he bore witness of the light. Now, I want you to think with me. Follow me here. Amen. Light and life are used interchangeably in the Word of God. Amen? Uh, even in the scripture we just read. It says that in him was life, and the life was the light of men, okay? And this light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness could not put it out. Praise our God. Anyway, let's go a little further. Amen. All right. Uh, John 8, 12. Very powerful. And dynamic verse, John 8, 12. Amen. Listen to what the word says. 
Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Notice again how light and life are used interchangeably, okay? And Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. What a powerful statement. Think about it. Jesus said, I'm, a, I'm the light of the world. Now, Jesus couldn't just be a good man. Uh, to make a statement like that, I'm the light of the world, he had to be who he said he was, the blameless son of God, or he had to be a, a madman lunatic because he said, I am the light of the world. And praise our God, Jesus is the light of the world. Praise our God. Excuse me. Sinuses want to uh, work once I, once the camera start rolling. <laughs> so forgive my sniffles. Amen. But think about that. Jesus Christ had to be who he said he was. The blameless son of God or a madman lunatic because he stood up and said, I am the light of the world. Think about that statement. Jesus, the light of the world. Well, praise our God. And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, uh, 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 when Jesus uh, entered into a certain area, uh, because there were a lot of Gentiles in that area, uh, listen to what the scripture says. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them that which sat in the region and the shadows of death, light has sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and, and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen, listen. Amen. The people that sat in darkness saw great light. Why? Because Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Those who sat in darkness saw great light. Jesus came into a dark world where there was none righteous, no, not one. Amen. A world where all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says the people that sat in darkness saw great light. Well, praise God. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And the Bible says, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has sprung up. Well, praise God. And from that point on, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, praise God. The light of the world offering life to the world. Now, I want to remind you of John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But this next scripture really got a hold of my heart. John chapter 9, verse 5. Listen to what Jesus says here. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Listen to what he says here. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I want you to let this sink in because he says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Here he says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So this scripture implies certain things. It implies that if he left the world, We are the light of the world now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Listen to what the scripture says. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But now you and I are the light of the world. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. He says, John 9, 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, Jesus says. So, since he left, that makes us the light of the world. Think with me. Matthew 5, 
15 and 16. Listen to what the world said. Uh, we need to read verse 14. Because verse 14 talks in terms, amen, that you are the light of the world. You and I, the church, is now the light of the world. Verse 14. And 15 talks about men do not light a candle and put it on the bushel, but on a candlestick that it might give light to all the house. Since you are the light of the world, God wants your light to shine. So he goes on in verse 16, says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Listen, you and I are the light of the world. You and I are the light of the world. And, and, and we're to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. God wants us to shine as lights in this dark world. I want to give you three points how you can shine as lights in this dark world. Three points, okay? All right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Okay. The first point. Personal and consistent obedience in secret. <laughs> Personal and consistent obedience in secret. Philippians 2.12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, not while I'm looking at you, but now, much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Listen, listen. Not just while somebody is around. What about when nobody's around? What about when nobody's around who knows you? What about when you're out of town? When nobody sees you, God sees you. And you'll be surprised who really knows you. <coughs> I told folks I was walking through the airport and I was pretty sure nobody knew me. I didn't see anybody I knew, but this one person kind of uh, inched their way uh, near me. And then they said, are you Crystal Carr, Jesus' husband? <laughs> I'm like, wow. You never know who knows you. And they knew my wife. And they knew me. Well, praise our God. You know, you 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 you'll be surprised. Listen, listen. So so, uh, personal and consistent obedience in secret. Uh, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. Paul says. Uh, let me read that from the Amplified. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions or commandments, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you show in my presence, but much more in my absence. Look, that same enthusiasm that you would show uh, while the boss is looking, that same enthusiasm you show while the pastor's looking, that same enthusiasm you show while somebody from the church can see you, uh, I want you to use that same enthusiasm even more so when nobody's around. Oh, yeah, listen, listen. He says, work out. Cultivate, carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation. Listen, you've got to cultivate this relationship with God in secret. That's the time you, you spend in prayer. That's the time you develop your prayer life. That's the time you spend in the word of God developing, amen, to your study habits. That's the time you get your journal and begin to write down what God is saying to you. Amen. You've got to cultivate this relationship. You should have personal goals. What are your personal goals? Amen. Uh, 
for your relationship, developing your relationship with God. What, what are your, cultivate it says, carry out to the goal, fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust. You can't trust self. You know what your pattern has been. You know how you've trusted self and fell on your face, okay? You know what the pattern is, how the enemy gets you to stumble. Why do you let him go through that same pattern, okay? Self-distrust with serious caution, T tenderness of conscience. You never tend to conscience toward God. Respond when he speaks to you. Uh, 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 if the Spirit of God check you, respond properly, okay? Well, praise God. Uh, working in a retail paint store, a brother said to me, uh, this person came to me, I waited on them, they left, and about an hour or two they came back, and they said, when we were discussing, I told you something that was not correct, and, and God would have me come back and tell you that I lied to you, and please forgive me. He was shocked that a person came back and said, they lied to me, uh, please forgive me, see, 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 tend the conscience. Amen. I've had to go back and make enough things right that I'm a lot more sensitive than I used to be. I'm beginning to exaggerate. The Spirit of God says, that's not true. I stop right there and make it right because I don't want to come back. I must have a tender conscience. And that person that came back and shared that they had lied to that clerk, the Holy Spirit's going to be able to speak to them again because they have a tender conscience. Okay? Amen. Watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Jesus. Listen, it's not your own strength, it says, verse 13, that you're working through. For it's God who's working in you all the while, effectively at work in you. He's energizing and creating in you the power and desire, both the will and the do uh, work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. God is working in you. Amen. Uh, and so, so uh, Jesus is the light of the world. He's in you so that now you're the light of the world and he is energizing you, showing you what his will is, building in you that desire and that will. But you've got to let him work in secret. It's in secret where you develop that. Number two, a faithful public witness. So I said, I said a consistent, number one, personal and consistent obedience in secret. Number two, a faithful public witness. Verses 14 and 15, a faithful public witness. He says in verse 14, do all things without murmuring and disputing that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Okay? Amplified Bible. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourself. Listen. James says you're the same as a person, man, a, a, a perfect man, if you control your mouth, your tongue. And, 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 and your faith picture will never rise in a higher than your confession. You know, you can think anything you want about yourself, but if what comes out of your mouth is grumbling and complaining, uh, you've already betrayed yourself. And, and, and uh, your, your mouth uh, discredit your witness. You're talking about you're saved and all they hear is negative stuff. You're complaining about your lot. Listen, listen. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God. You know, uh, I'm not happy with my husband. I'm not happy being single. I'm not happy with my job. I'm not happy. With, listen, do all things without grumbling and fault finding, complaining against God and question and doubting among, among yourself. Listen, why is that? That you may show yourself to be blameless and guileless, innocent, uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and, and wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse generation among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars of beacons shining out clearly in the dark world. People are watching you and people are following your lead. And so a public witness, a lot of it has to do with your mouth, what you say. You need to bring your tongue under subjection. Uh, your position in Christ is faultless, 
blameless, unrebukable. Okay? Live that out. Cause them to see that. Again, draw from that strength that you have in Christ. Okay? All right? Amen. That you may show yourself to be blameless, godless, innocent, uncontaminated, children of God, without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked, spiritual perverse generation, among whom you shine, you are seen as bright lights, stars of beacons shine out clearly in this dark world. Third, intentional evangelism and discipleship. You got to be intentional about sharing your faith. Because as people look at you, somebody's going to ask you a question. And you need to be able to share your faith. And you need to be able to share a simple plan of salvation. And you need to learn the Romans road or something. You, you need to be able to, you can't come and get the pastor. You know, as, as you live this thing out, somebody's going to ask you about the hope that's in you. And so he says, verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Holding forth the word of life. Not only living this thing out, but you must be prepared to share your faith when they ask you about it. And I hope you know how to share the plan of salvation. I hope you know how to lead somebody to Christ. And somebody says a beggar ought to know where he found food and lead another beggar to the source. So, intentional evangelism. You got to be on purpose about sharing your faith. You need to start praying about those people that God is bringing you in contact with. You pray about it. You ask for an opportunity, but you must be prepared when the opportunity comes, okay? And then when those people get to know him, you got to be intentional about discipling them, okay? And discipleship is not preaching to them. It's becoming their friend. It's taking them to lunch. It's allowing them to spend some time with you so they can see Christ in you, okay? You'd be surprised how many people would love to come to a Bible study in your home uh, with two, three other people. Um, they don't have to be saved to do that. They like you. And they'll just come and sit there and listen until God cleans their clock. All I'm saying that you need to be intentional. You got to be on, pur on purpose about evangelism. It, it, it's, evangelism is not always about preaching. It's about living. It's about building relationships. You need to be intentional about building relationships with people that God has given you favor with. There's a reason why God has given you favor with them. Okay? I say intentional evangelism and discipleship. You the let your light shine in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation. And Paul has so much confidence with these folks. He said, yeah, he says, if I be offered upon the if I be offered upon the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. And for the same cause also, do you joy and rejoice with me? Paul says, look, I got confidence in you. If I'm offered up for the, on, the, on the altar for the sacrifice of your faith, look, I'm, I'm good for that. I, I'm, amen. And you all rejoice too because, amen, I'm also faithful. Listen, well, praise our God. I kind of rushed through that. Um, you are the light of the world. Your light is to shine in this dark place. Uh, one, personal, consistent obedience in secret. Two, a faithful public witness. And three, amen, intentional evangelism and discipleship. Well, praise our God. Amen. Well, Jesus, it's all about him all about Jesus. Shine as lights. God bless you. Smile on you. Give you peace.